Hi, everyone. Welcome to um, another uh, webinar for the Salt Basins TIG. This morning, we have a special guest. His name is Dr. Emilio Caro Alvarez. He obtained his bachelor's degree in geology in 2005 and a PhD in earth sciences in 2012 from the University of Barcelona. His PhD project focused on understanding evaporitic sedimentation in a foreland basin with two orogenic salients and to improve the knowledge of stratigraphic heterogeneities of salt formation on structural deformation. After his PhD, he was working for three years in the industry. First, he was looking for suitable salt dye piers for underground storage in Spain, and subsequently developed a 4D characterization of a petroleum system in the Los Llanos Basin, Colombia at Equipetrol. Since 2016, he's had a lecture position at Yacte Tech University in Ecuador, where his mission is to understand the sedimentary evolution, tectonic setting, and deformation of Andean evaporite basins applied to hydrocarbon evaporation, brine, and MVT deposits and paleoclimate. He has around 15 years of experience where he's worked in different areas located in Spain, Algeria, Turkey, Sweden, Colombia, Ecuador, Peru, and Brazil for different institutions and companies. And with that, Emilio, I'll let you take over. Thank you so much. Okay, uh, well, first of all, uh, thank you for your invitation to do this talk in this nice uh, group, Salt Basins. So uh, I want to share uh, part of uh, the results after uh, three years of hard work in, in Peru uh, in different salt deposits, okay? Um, this, uh, this work is not only mine, it's also thanks to different uh, persons, colleagues and friends. One of them is Roberto Barragan from Ecuador uh, with a high experience working in salt basins such as in the Gabon and Brazil offshore, Gulf of Mexico, and also in Peru. Uh, also Christian Hurtado uh, in the working currently at, at the University of San Marcos in Lima in Peru. Isabel Calderón, uh, a researcher in Peru Petro. Uh, my colleagues in Yachay Tech, uh, Germán Martín and Daniel Vázquez and Elizabeth, uh, with a high experience in carbonates, deposits, and also uh, orogenic fronts. Uh, and also our students, uh, Fanny, Ariana, and Lucho. Uh, thanks for all your help. Okay, so this is part of you and they obtained uh, this recent graduation, okay? So the, 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 the work that I want to show you now, it's the, the multidisciplinary approach for understanding the then Amazonian salt deposits between late Permian and Middle Jurassic. So this is the outline of my presentation. I will start with the introduction. So first of all, I want to show you the concept of salgian, okay? A uh, salgian is a sedimentary basin with evaporite minerals covering an extensive surface. Uh, according to uh, these authors, uh, Schroeder, Hudek and Jackson, Warren Rodriguez, uh, this extensive surface is up to around 100,000 uh, kilometers squares. Also, the another condition that uh, a barbaric basin has to complain for a salgian is that 100 to 1,000 meters of thick, okay? Salgians are very important for research, okay? That's, for example, for paleoclimatology, life evolution, ocean dynamics, tectonics, and natural resource. I think that, are you agree with me when I show you the the most famous example of Salgian is the Messinian Salgian in the Mediterranean Sea, okay? So, so what is the salt accumulation through the time? Uh, if we focus in this lapse of time, uh, Permian to Cretaceous, this time was the most relevant time in volume and mass 
for some uh, salient deposition, okay? So we have a lot of examples. One of the main example is the texting and also Permian Basin in Europe and uh, USA. In the North U Europe, in the Light Triassic, the low and salt in the Gulf of Mexico, and also the offshore Brazil and, and West Africa uh, at the Cretaceous. Okay. And what happened in the Andean Amazonian foreland? Uh, well, here at, at, the, at the right side, uh, I have a, a part of South America. We have the, almost all the countries, but here in Colombia, a little bit part of Venezuela, Bolivia, Chile, and also Peru and West Brazil. So in this area, at least three evaporitic intervals uh, we can find controlling the stru structural deformation. Uh, the uh, older, uh, the older uh, level is in the Permian and Triassic transition, okay? Uh, the another uh, interval is in the late uh, Triassic. So in the Andean Amazonian, we can find evaporites, this is the, the uh, purple level that to the eastern to Cordillera, we can find uh, carbonates, okay? And the, another level is in the middle Jurassic, okay? If some of you is uh, wondering, ah, I was in on the way to Machu Picchu from Cusco, one of the, the most famous plates uh, of the world, okay? And maybe you stop in the Mara Salpons, it's another uh, beautiful tourist point, uh, recognized by the UNESCO, okay? These salt deposits or these salt levels, okay, are in the Cretaceous, okay? Just a, a, a note for all of you, okay? But here we focus in this presentation, we focus only the per Cretaceous uh, evaporitic levels, the Permian, late Permian evaporites, late Triassic evaporites, and middle Jurassic evaporites. So what is the motivation? What is the motivation of this work? So there are uh, uncertainty of the chronostatigraphy tectonic setting and setting the model of a late Permian to Jurassic salt giant in the uh, Andean Amazonian foreland. So uh, in, the, in the previous um, slide, I show you three evaporated levels, Cretaceous levels. So for example, if you, if you see uh, this word from uh, white at uh, 2018, okay, we can see in a cross section around here in the north, close to the Peru and Ecuador border that the main uh, evaporitic uh, level controlling the structure is uh, Ray Triassic. Okay. Another cross section by Calderon at the same uh, place. So the age for uh, this outdoor is late Permian. Okay. If we go southward, a cross section around the uh, northern, southern part of Peru. Uh, if we uh, take consideration this word from uh, Bordiri, uh, the main detached level is in a evaporitic level of a late Permian salt. By contrast, uh, Zamora at 2019, for, for these outdoors, okay, is a middle Jurassic salt in a, a same uh, clock session, okay? You can see that the controversy on the chronostatigraphy and uh, in turn the tectonic setting of these uh, evaporites during uh, their deposition is uh, very high, okay? So what is the relevance of investigate all these uh, evaporitic deposits? Well, the main, one of the main uh, relevance is the, to, to fit the time constraint of permodiasic elements in the of the Congo continent, uh, South America and present day. Another uh, relevance is a better understanding on sequence stratigraphy in salt giants. So here I show you a map uh, with all, 
well, part of the, of the most important uh, salt basins from Paleozoic to Cenozoic. Uh, okay, part of them are salt giants, okay. But we find words or in the literature on sedimentary evolution, we find few words, few studies. Me just found uh, three studies, okay? And all these studies are focused in um, Europe and North Africa. One of them is in, in Spain, another one in Germany, uh, and also the another one is in Algeria uh, by Tarnel and Sheriff. Uh, also, for T, and I, 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 I'm sorry, the another author I, I don't remember. Okay, but our focus in this area. Okay, uh, why? Why this few number of students? So, if you see this map on the Mesozoic deposits, uh, we can op we can find offshore salt giants. So, when you have offshore salt giants, you cannot go to all crops and obtain more data for this sedimentary evolution. Also, uh, we have uncompleted stratigraphic record of the, all the uh, salt section. Also, the common problems in working with evaporites, we have massive remobilization of uh, on dissolution and also diagenetic alteration. So another relevance is uh, to find the climatic conditions during the Norian and uh, during late Triassic. So, if again, if, if you study the European sections in the late Triassic, so we can find a humid episode ending the Norian age. That, but these studies are only focused in Europe, East Greenland, and North Africa. So, a question that we can do is this is uh, this humid, I'm sorry. This humid episode, it's local or it's global? And also, can and then Amazonian evaporites save something to solve this question? So, one is another relevance. So, uh, finally, the, the last relevance is on natural resource in salt giants. In the uh, Peruvian case or the Andean Amazonian case, uh, there are the most important. Uh, uh, Cooper and silver sank lead deposits uh, related related with these evaporates and also the, with the origin of the Mississippi Valley type or deposits. So, what is the role of the evaporates on this type of deposits? So, I, I will try to do a, a, an answer to this question. So, and also on uh, petroleum systems, if you see this map. In the Andean Amazonian foreland, okay, to the north, to Ecuador, and also uh, Colombia, we can find the main uh, hydrocarbon fields are related to Cretaceous place, where the reservoirs are uh, here in the in the Cretaceous. Also, the source rocks are also in the in the Cretaceous. If we go to the south, to the south Peru, and also uh, we go to Bolivia. The, the plays are related to uh, Paleozoic uh, plays, source rock and reservoirs. So what about Triassic to Jurassic plays uh, in this area? They are uh, missing. So how does a better understanding of evaporites help to hydrocarbon exploration? So I hope, I expect to, to give you some uh, exploration tips according to our results to uh, uh, decrease the exploration risk on these areas. And also it's uh, regional areas around the world where evaporites were deposited. So now I will go to the approach of our work. So why do the controversy on the evaporites, uh, evaporites chronostratigraphy and tectonic setting exist? So, in my opinion, in our opinion, so in previous wars, regional tectono sequential analysis connecting the different and the Amazonian basins and the Eastern Cordillera is not considered. Okay. 
Also, there is no lithological integration of K surface sections and subsurface exploration wells with seismic lines. Finally, we uh, don't find a uh, chemostatigraphy on the vaporites, okay? So uh, part of the solution uh, of, this, of this question, uh, we can find in this area. This, is, this was our study area. Uh, to put solution and to analyze uh, and, and making uh, the, this approach uh, to find answers on all these questions. So this is the geological map of, of, of this area. Uh, you can see these uh, pink lines, okay, is the seismic lines. We work it with more, but uh, I'm sorry here, just I show it uh, part of them, okay? And now, so I want to show you the exploration wells that we uh, take, take it account, okay? We, uh, we have these uh, white circles are exploration wells. So uh, on the um, geological setting of, of this part, so we have the main uh, frontal thrust, the Chasuta thrust, and it's clearly uh, controlled by the vaporitic uh, distribution, okay? I don't know if you can see these uh, black areas, okay? Here we can see, right, okay? There are Saldia Pierce or domes. Here there are another uh, domes, okay? Maybe the colors are not good or maybe it's really, really too small for uh, and resolution, but this area, the Guayaga Basin is full of uh, Saldia Pierce and Sal domes, okay? So the, the main basins of this area are the Acre Basin in Brazil, Marañón, the same basin, but in Peru. And also, and also the Supandean zone is the Guayaga Basin and Ucayali, and then the Eastern Cordillera. This is the main uh, structural domains of this area, okay? So, and we can find in this area, rocks from Neocean, Cretaceous in green, and also in blue, Triassic and Jurassic, and also in this uh, pink color or purple color uh, Permian, okay? So, and what, and what on the sedimentary model of the vaporites? So in previous wars, we don't find lithological, detailed lithological, lithological mapping and sedimentary structures on, on the vaporites, uh, mainly in South Domes or South Diapils. Also, it is not considered the well log response of the evaporate sections in the exploration wells, and no petrographic analysis on the evaporates has been carried out before. So we, we did uh, all these analyses uh, where previous wars were not focused, okay? Now I will show you part of the results on the depositional sequence and chronostatigraphy, okay? So on the positional sequence, so we find we find two tectonoseconds with salt deposits. Okay, the the all the sequence uh, known as a sequence is where salt is affected by compressional precretaceous deformation. So we can see here uh, in this. Um, cream color, the Cretaceous to Neocean successions, okay? And then we can see here salt pillows. These salt pillows are bounded by um, two uh, appraisal unit here with uh, this uh, pink color and suprasalt uh, unit with this gray color, okay? Uh, this sequence is uh, over, uh, overlying on a pre-Triassic and Permian uh, units, okay? Another uh, feature of this uh, first sequence is the, the, that is affected by a pre-Cretaceous reef stage, stage, okay? We can see here, this is um, uh, 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 in the upper part, the original seismic line, okay? And below is a, uh, the same line, but uh, the Cretaceous and conformity flattening. Okay, we can see that here in this uh, 
part, we can see a small salt pillows, okay, that they're affected by this sin reef uh, stage, okay? The subsequent uh, sequence uh, is where salt is affected by compressional post deformation related to the Andean uh, orogeny. Um, for example, the chathuta thrust affecting the salt with uh, this uh, pink uh, purple color, okay? For example, we can see this salt pillow. Uh, this, um, uh, the Cretaceous is also affected by this salt pillow, okay? Another feature is that uh, this uh, sequence is sealing a rifting stage, okay? For example, uh, here in the right part of this seismic line, we have uh, the salt sequence with a, a super, uh, I'm sorry, uh, with a pre-salt unit in blue, okay? Sealing as in reef, okay? Another evidence of this uh, rifting sealing is in this section supported by two exploration wells. We can hear the thin reef uh, sequence seal it by the, the pre-salt sequence and the salt, okay? Here we have uh, overlying the, this B sequence, we have another sequence, the C sequence that is, um, is lying in conformity on the B sequence, okay? So on the chronostatigraphy, for lithostatigraphic sequence, we find, okay? So the first lithostatigraphic sequence is related to the A sequence, okay? Uh, what is the lithologies? Okay, we, we know that we have a salt highlight main, mainly, and this highlight uh, below, we have the pre-salt, mainly uh, sandstones and shells. Uh, these shells are um, one of the main source rocks of the, uh, Upper Paleozoic Reservoirs uh, to the southern part of, of Peru. Uh, and above of the highlight, we find also Aeolian uh, sandstones, okay? So what is the chronology of this sequence? So here in the Chio San Alejandro well, Panergy find found a late Permian pollen, okay? Also, uh, we use a sample, the, this sample uh, PAC33, okay? We measured the detrital zircons and we uh, find that the youngest detrital zircons uh, were between uh, this age, uh, 244 and uh, 258 million years ago. It's that thing that the minimum deposition age of these uh, sandstone, uh, sandstones uh, were about uh, 258 million years, okay, almost on the Permian Triassic transition. Okay, we have the, the sin reef sequence. It's uh, Characterized by conglomerates and red beds. Um, so, according to spikings, uh, the, in the Eastern Cordillera, these conglomerates were deposited between uh, Middle uh, Triassic and a part of the Late Triassic, okay, in this range of, of age. The format of uh, and hydrite and highlight and also limestones in the in one section uh, surf, uh, section and also in the Oxapampa well. Um, <coughs> I'm sorry, I, I drink a little bit water. The the pre salt of this uh, salt is formed of sandstones with evaporites. Um, here in the uh, Loreto well and also in the Oxapampa well. And also another important feature of this sequence is that the top is formed of uh, limestones, okay? 
So we uh, take a sample in a salvia pier in a sealstone level, okay, and we find uh, zircons, okay. The the youngest the digital age of these zircons are between uh, late Triassic to uh, 136 and uh, 247. So that means a, a minimum deposition age of uh, early Triassic, almost um, middle Triassic, okay? So also uh, we obtain samples for uh, stable isotopes uh, of the evaporites indicating a late Triassic age. So here we cross the strontium and also uh, sulfur isotopes. And we can see that if we compare with uh, late Permian evaporites in Europe and North American, and also with late Triassic evaporites in Europe, mainly the Kuiper uh, phases. So the Triassic evaporates in Peru are uh, more similar to the late Triassic. So that's mean that this B sequence is uh, was deposited around late Triassic, okay? That's it's important to define the age of the, the salt child, okay? Because um, if you see the distribution, uh, these uh, salts of the B sequence are, um, are located in both the uh, Ucayali, also Southern Marayon and Guayaba basins. So uh, occupying more uh, surface, okay? <clears throat> Another feature of this B sequence is that to the Eastern Cordillera in the Y46 well, so we have a synchronous uh, relationship with the, uh, the limestone, the carbonates of the Triassic and Jurassic, commonly known in this area, Pucara group, okay? So the C sequence is, uh, we assume, a uh, Jurassic age. So here uh, in the Eastern Cordillera, we can find the uh, Jurassic evaporites overlying this carbonate of uh, Bucara, okay? Also, this is a, a, a the, at the bottom of this sequence, but the rest of part of this sequence is mainly sandstones, Aeolian sandstones, okay? Uh, red beds and fluvial uh, sandstones. So here I go to the next uh, part of the results, lithostagyrography and phases of the uh, late Triassic evaporites, okay? So um, in the autochthonous uh, part of the uh, Andean Amazonian uh, foreland, uh, we have these uh, K sections, one, two of them, the right part, okay? Two of them is from wells. One of these wells is Rio de Moura in the Acre Basin in West Brazil. Another uh, surface section in, the, in a salt dome, and also another section in the Oxa, Oxapampa well. So, we have another uh, section correlation in the alloctonous part <coughs> in different uh, salt domes, okay? So we uh, identificate up to seven units into the late Triassic evaporites, okay? So the oldest unit uh, is now at red sandstone. So it is formed of sandstones, okay? with some highlight and hydrite uh, intervals and limestone intervals, okay? Above, we have the lower cell unit, mainly formed of highlight, or wherever we can find uh, sandstone uh, layers <coughs> and some uh, carbonate uh, intervals. Then we have a, a carbonate unit. Uh, we call this unit lower carbonate unit with uh, limestones and dolstones. And then we find 
above this uh, carbonate unit, we have we find the the sulfate unit uh, forming a, a wedge. Uh, so these kind of wedge are very typical in, for example, in the 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 Vera and hydride in Thetstein in in Europe. Okay. So overlying this sulfate wedge, we find the Ubersal unit, and then the above the Madston unit, and finally the Uber carbonate unit. Okay. <coughs> we find the the red sandstone unit and the lower sal and lower carbonate is only identified by subsurface data. They are not outcropping in surface, okay? So here are a picture of the sulfate unit. Here we have Ariana helping to the scale of the picture, okay? Here, the Upersal unit, you can see that the outcrops are amazing. Uh, know that uh, we are working in the most of the humid places of the world. However, salt, salt is preserved. That's explained the rapid exhumation of the Andes, okay? And these structures, these domes are still moving, they are still extruding, okay? That's the reason why we find in close to maybe the, the, these oh, uh, salt diapirs are the, the diapirs of the uh, lowest latitude of the world, okay? So, and, uh, and also the Maston unit, <coughs> you can see here, uh, anhydrite levels with mud stones, okay? So on the sedimentary cycles in the sandstone member and lower salt member, we find mainly deep in our cycles, okay? <clears throat> we go from a shallow to deep environments, okay? Um, this is from uh, gamma and DT well logs, okay, in the here the depths. By contrast, in the sulfate member, we find shallow in our cycles. The cycles go from deep conditions to shallow conditions. Here, an example when we have mud supported carbonates and change to laminate gypsum, banded gypsum, and finally clay to seal, indicating. Uh, continental environments, okay, in these last phases. Um, and here in the, this is the upper part of the, of the sulfide member, and the lower part, we have also shell <coughs> going from deep to a cylindric gypsum, and again, it's laminated gypsum with deepest uh, phases. <coughs> And also in the upper cell member, we have the same shallowing upward cycles. Here um, in, in a dome in the um, allotronous part, we go from massive gypsum to sandstone, okay? Indicating in the, in the top a continental and fluvial influence, okay? And here in the Oxapampa well, we can find uh, the gamma and the T response of the well logs. And the then the, the tendency is going from deep to shallow, okay? So finally, uh, I will show the significance and conclusions of these results, okay? First, I want to show you, so the paleoge paleogeographical and paleotectonic uh, relevance of our work, so our results and data collected from previous works uh, allow to interpret that during the late Triassic, uh, a, a salt giant filling an undeformed area of more or less uh, 170,000 kilometers of square. Okay, you can see in this map, uh, here in these circles, we can find Quito, the capital of Ecuador, Lima, of Peru and La Paz on Bolivia. Uh, so considering some uh, previous wars and uh, evaporate sections, for example, from the Titicaca Basin in the Peru and, and Bolivian border, and some outcrops 
uh, in North Peru and South of Ecuador, <coughs> we arrived at the conclusion that these uh, evaporites have this surface. And also, uh, if we take into consideration this cross section, uh, the evaporites so we're located to the east of the Andean Amazonian foreland and we're synchronous to carbonatic deposition to the west, okay? Uh, you can see this coxation where a structural height is controlling these uh, sedimentary uh, changes, okay? In the west part, carbonates of the Pucara group, okay? And the west part, uh, salt and sulfates that I, I showed you, uh, and also in this, in the top of this structural height, we find a mix uh, with carbonates and sulfates, okay? This algion was controlled by thermal sac from a tectonic point of view, okay? <clears throat> on the sequence stratigraphy in salgiants, so based on our cycles analysis, uh, the evaporated units have a relationship with eustatic oxidations of the oceanic level and associated depositional system tracks uh, using the HAC, uh, the work of HAC et al. Okay. So, <clears throat> and here we can see that uh, the red sandstones, uh, the lower salt and lower uh, carbonate is controlled by a low stand, a transgressive and high uh, stand system track, okay? By contrast, the sulfate and upper salt uh, units are controlled by a falling stage and low stand uh, stage, okay? So these, these uh, interpretations are very, very important uh, to go to this question. Can, can salt giants be only forming in low stand system tracks? So uh, all, uh, almost all of the words consider that uh, salt giants are deposited in low stand. Um, however, in the Thexstein in, in Europe, there is a controversy on this question because these uh, evaporates are controlling also by high stand and transferive system track, okay? I think that our results can help to this controversy on related to this question, okay? So also, uh, we interpret the climatic conditions related to these evaporates. Uh, so first, the existence of evaporates in the Me Too group, and here, uh, an equivalent units in Bolivia suggests an arid stage during the northern. So we can uh, put uh, this climatic evolution with arid conditions, okay? At the Me Too group, that is the Sin Reef sequence. But the red stone unit, uh, we attribute to a humid episode and part of the Triassic evaporates to arid to semi arid conditions. So here, about to the ending of the Norian age, we have a humid episode that is changed suddenly to arid conditions, okay, related to the evaporates. So if we compare uh, this climatic evolution with a climatic evolution in, in Europe, uh, based on McKee, uh, we, can, we can find uh, a similarities, okay? You can see that for uh, Maki, uh, there is a humid episode in Europe. So we can find that this humid episode is a global episode, solving the question and I introduced uh, in the introduction, uh, asking if it was a local or was global. In our opinion, according to uh, Comparing these results, uh, we relate on a global episode of this uh, humid uh, event. So finally, so we can uh, find uh, relevance and significance <coughs> on uh, 
petroleum system and also mineralization of of the or deposits okay so uh, on the petroleum features i want to show you that in the carbonate intervals we find moldy porosity okay and also uh, the shells levels we find around four percent of total organic carbon okay that that's very important for the uh, petroleum system and also I am sorry, I have not pictures in this presentation, but in this moldic porosity, we can find pyrite and sphalerite um, accumulated in this porosity, indicating uh, that these phases can control the copper and silver and zinc and lead deposits in the Eastern Cordillera, okay? So, if we apply this conceptual model, we can see here in the right part um, a sketch of uh, Warren, where indicate that uh, do do dolomitization area and also a uh, moldic porosity area. So as we compare with the uh, Andean Amazonian uh, sketch, uh, we can interpret that this structural hive is uh, can be can have a, a high potential also for uh, ore deposits and also a petroleum reservoirs. Okay. So if we are uh, if we uh, compare with the uh, terrain basin, I think that we think that it's a, a, a excellent potential analog, where anhydride uh, uh, intervals are related to um, carbonates with moldic porosity. Uh, this basin, uh, there are uh, several uh, economic hydrocarbon fields. So thanks a lot for your attention. Uh, it was a pleasure to share uh, our results with all you. So if you have some questions, comments, uh, you can say if it's the presentation was bad, it would, celebrations, everything is welcome. Thank you. That's so funny. Can you hear me? Yes, I can, can I see. Thank you so much for the energy and for your presentation. It was great. I enjoyed it very much. Okay. I actually have many questions for you, but let's have a look at the Q&A and see. We do have a couple of questions here. Okay. From Piotr. I don't know if you can see it. I will read it for you. Um, but I, I, think the, I think the comments, maybe the questions are there, I can read, okay? Okay, that's fine. Uh, let, me, let me read it for, for the rest of the people, just in case. Um, so we have a, a here, thanks for a very interesting presentation. Are there any older than Triassic salt evaporitic successions in this area? I ask about these as in the Polish basin, there are upper Triassic evaporites that had been sourced by extruded sexton upper Permian evaporites. So climatic control might be, be not so important here. Emilio? I am sorry, I, this, can you, can you listen yeah. to me? So, yes, I'm listening. Can you see I that question? Do you want me to repeat it? Can you repeat the question? Yeah, uh, I'm so, sorry, that's, Piotr is asking if um, there are any older than Triassic salt evaporated successions ah. in the basin. In this area, uh, okay, between the late Permian and uh, late Triassic evaporates in, in Peru and also in West Brazil, uh, it is documented uh, mm, sulfate intervals in the middle Triassic in the Sin Reef uh, sequence, also in Bolivia, not only in Peru. Um, I, I, I have no a clear idea what is the origin of these evaporites. In my opinion, are lacustrine evaporites, okay? Are not marine. But um, I'm not sure because we need to um, take samples and 
go to the lab for a chemostatigraphy uh, results, okay? We have another question uh, from Mark Rowan. Emily, okay. uh, Emilio, what I saw was salt core folds and salt in the hanging walls of thrusts. Do you have any passive diapirs that penetrate the younger strata? Uh, yes, I, I, will, I want to show you uh, again the presentation in the geological map. Uh, let me let me check, let me find. Can you see the geological map of the study area? No, I am sorry. So the, the answer is yes. Uh, no, we cannot. So there are yes. some some um, in the in the autochthonous area. We find anticline cores. Okay, these structures um, are not penetrating the. Uh, Andean series, the Cretaceous to Neocean series. But if we go to Alochonous area, uh, we find diapirs, they are uh, real diapirs that are penetrating the, the Cretaceous. Okay, I don't know if you see here, can you see here these uh, black areas uh, penetrating the uh, Paleocean to Quaternary uh, section? Okay, around here. Can you see? Yes, yes, we can see. Okay. I mean, you have that black box in front of the slide, but we can see yeah, that uh, polygon in black. Do you have uh, any section maybe to show us? Um, here in the presentation, no. Uh, okay, let me, let me see here in my computer. Maybe I can share a... Uh, yeah, maybe Mark is. No, I have it in, in the. It's okay, no worries. You can okay. you can share it later. Maybe just share it. Okay. With Mark. I I I I I will be glad if you write me an email and I can send you a, a image. Okay, I have I have no problem. Okay. Yeah, sounds good. We have some comments here. Uh, nice, thanks for the talk. Congratulations. Thank thanks you. for a very interesting talk many comments in the chat no more questions i do have some questions um while we wait maybe somebody else will get motivated to ask to ask something else uh, well i it was very interesting I, I i love um your energy and the way you presented your work without a breakfast a... that's energy without breakfast <laughs> <laughs> imagine yeah. with breakfast exactly that's good, that's good. We all need that. Uh, I was wondering about the, you know, these wells that you're correlating, I was worried because I was looking at the scale, at the spacing of the wells, and it was hundreds of kilometers away from each other. So I understand like this is the data you have. So I was just wondering how many wells do you have? Um, what are the implications of having, you know, this um, spacing between wells and then assuming uh, you can correlate, you know, and then getting this, you know, um, information from what the data you yeah. have. Yeah, thank you, Clara, for your comment. Uh, and uh, this is a very important question. Uh, here in half an hour, I summarizing uh, three, we are on the way to go to the four years work, okay? Um, we, we, we work with a lot of data. I, I said 100 signal light, but are more like 200. Where I have my, the computer is full of seismic lines and was three years uh, reviewing, interpreting these seismic lines and also um, uh, tied to K wells. Okay. Um, so uh, I have recently. Uh, publication of us was accepted, it's online. So we are on the way to another uh, publication, okay? So where uh, these details, this zoom of uh, uh, a small scale are, are displayed, okay? Uh, obviously, uh, here in this presentation, I wanted to share uh, some uh, overview, okay, of our work and show the main interpretations, the main ideas, Okay, uh, but yes, maybe the presentation is 
too much uh, big picture, okay? Uh, but if you write me an email, I, I would like to show, uh, I would like to see uh, the details between this well and this well, and what well, what are the seismic lines that are in this uh, between these uh, wells? It's no problem, and also it's will good for discussion, okay? But yes, you are right. Uh, this presentation was very. No, it was good. It general, was good. No okay. worries. I was just wondering about the 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 space in between the wells because I, you know it's almost one basin to the other, hundreds, two hundred kilometers between two wells, for example. Uh, but it's definitely. Uh, we have comments here. He's the most energetic presenter. Yeah, it, <laughs> a lot Tara, of energy. If you, if you if you see the previous if you see the previous words, okay, you see okay a detailed words in the Ucayali Basin, in the Uyuguayaga mm -hmm. Basin, in the Santiago Basin, and at the beginning in the introduction I said okay one of the main problems generating this controversy of the chrono stratigraphy was that no words in the literature connecting all this basin. So mm -hmm. uh, this idea needs to do uh, a, a high distance correlations, uh, yeah. crossing countries. Uh, that's that's only- I understand. Yeah, yeah that's okay. fine. Thank you. It's, it's good work, Emilia, yes, it's, it's really good. Um, I, do we have more questions? No, no, it's just uh, a nice comment here. He's the most energetic and the most positive presenter. So presenter so far. Definitely, you made us happy today. Um, Emilio, I have another question um, since we don't have more here. Um, do you estimate how thick this salt, you know, because when we talk about salt giants, we, 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 don't, we don't only think about, you know, how laterally extensive they are, but how thick they are. So I saw your sections and I noticed, you know, the salt is relatively thin. Uh, compared to, you know, the whole sequence. So I was just wondering if you estimated, you know, how thick um, this could have been during, you know, before a deformation, the actual salt of the vaporites. Um, well, on the late Permian evaporites, this is thin. I suppose that uh, the original thickness was around 200, up to 200. Meters, okay. Mm -hmm. The main import, the 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 salt giant, the late Triassic salt giant, five to six, seven hundred, the the thickest part. But um, okay, the late Permian evaporites. Uh, I think that is concentration in only one million years deposition, also half million deposition. <clears throat> the late Triassic, the late Triassic salt giant is accumulated in four millions, okay? So okay. that is the reason uh, for the, the the thickness, okay? I suppose, I suppose that I, I said before that five to 700, I think more. So if I, I, I take into account all the units, the lower salt, the upper salt, okay? The totally could reach around 900, 1000, it's complicated. With, with this, okay. Yeah, of course. I need to form it, okay. It changes. I was just wondering if you had any any ideas but of thickness. Yeah. That's good. Uh, do we have any more questions? Let me see. I, I did. I was so excited. I didn't know about this area. So uh, thank you so much for, for you know presenting for us today. I learned a lot and I'm very curious to know more. Do we have any questions, any additional questions here? I do have another one while we wait. Oh, sorry, this one from Kay Giles here. Emilio, thank you for the great summary of a huge area. Do you think there is any local tectonic controls on salt deposition creating microclimates like rain shadow effects? Um, well, for the future world that we have, okay, I was talking <coughs> on the tectonic setting controlling the position of uh, these salts, okay, the sedimentary evolution, okay, the chronostatigraphy. Now we go to the next step is to understand the deformation, both the late Permian evaporates and also the late Triassic evaporates. So um, on the uh, sediment, the sin sedimentary units, 
uh, synchronous to the salt deformation is uh, complicated. Uh, okay, we are in the jungle. We have not oak globs. We have not uh, synchronous sedimentary the good oak globs on syn depositional units. Okay, we have some uh, K-symic lines that we can see uh, synchronous deposition uh, related to the salt uh, deformation. But uh, at, at this stage, I, I have no idea on, on, on these uh, shadow uh, conditions to generate a micro um, climates, okay? Um, it's an interesting question because we are working in one of the most uh, places with a biodiversity of the world, okay? Um, that is the, the, the gate of the Amazon uh, basin. And it will be interesting to focus on, on, on these questions, yes. We do have a question here. Thank you, Rachel, for letting me know. Um, from Mar Monagas. Thanks for your talk, Emilio. Nice to see a bit of geochemistry again. Can you say a bit more about sampling strategy? Have you sampled different wells and have you seen any interesting trends in terms of chemostratigraphy? Well, on sampling strategy, machete, yes, and a boat on the jungle. So this is the sampling strategy, the only strategy, sampling strategy that I know during my field work. A lot of uh, uh, team for mosquitoes, that is the sampling strategy. Well, uh, so there are uh, 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 nice uh, saldia peers, uh, also the geological mapping uh, from the, the Peruvian Geological Survey is uh, with high quality. So, uh, well, the problem that we have that uh, our uh, budget for research was very, very low. So we, uh, at the beginning, we go, we visit all the salt domes and salt appears and we take samples uh, to bring to the lab and, and also um, have uh, siltone uh, levels to find zircons. Uh, also, was a, a, a really good idea to find uh, appetites and zircons to control the uh, thermology of the salty peers or on the deformation. Okay, but unfortunately, we didn't find uh, enough appetites uh, to model the thermochronology uh, evolution. Okay, on and the second question of Mark, uh, have you sampled different wells and have um, so wells were sampled? Okay, we take uh, well logs, but all samples were taken from uh, field and outcrops. Okay. More questions? Thank More you. Questions? Thanks for the clarification. That was from Mar Murag Muraga. Thank you, Emilio. Do we have any more questions or any more comments? I had another one, but I think that we can let you go. Oh, you, uh, well, I can ask you and then I'll let you go um, if there are no more questions. So you mentioned these cycles. Did you estimate how many cycles um, from the ones you were uh, describing in your presentation? Well, uh, I, I show you the main cycles. I think mm -hmm. that cycles is the third and fourth order uh, cycles. Yeah. Uh, the units, like uh, the lower side unit, are related to uh, I am sorry. Um, the cycles I show is from four to five uh, order, and the units into the late Triassic uh, evaporites are related to third order, uh, second and, and third order cycle. Okay. Um, 
on on the fourth order cycles, uh, well, we in a in a in a unit, for example, in the lower salt, we find around ten. Uh, I, I don't remember. I have to check. Okay, mm -hmm. but in this in this unit, we found around um, more than ten, between ten and twenty. I, I remember. Okay. Um, okay. Thank you, Emilio. Um, do you have any plans in the future to do, um, like to relate the stratigraphic heterogeneity with the structural styles that you observe? Uh, I, I yes. guess that's what you uh, said. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, yes, we, we are planning. Uh, now, I hope the next weeks or, I, I, or months, uh, we are planning to do sandbox models to understand playing with uh, different uh, geometries of the different salt sequence and, and playing with sandbox, I think. But we will see. That's the that plan. Sounds exciting. Sounds awesome. Yeah. Good luck. It, it's, it's, it, it's in the plan, okay? Okay, awesome. But wait, wait. Have, I think that everybody has to wait. I think that everybody wants the, the results now. And <laughs> yeah, you have to come back and give another talk, Rochelle. Uh, well, no, I have. Yeah. Now there are other people that are maybe waiting. Yeah, we have a list. Yes, definitely. Yeah. But you can come back yeah, next year, next season. Okay. Thank you. Can no way to see. Yeah, we have another comments. Uh, let's read those comments and then we'll let you go um, rest. Uh, one second. So can no way to see more results from the models. Thanks for the talk, Emilio. See you all. This is Mar Moragas and Connor. Sounds very exciting, Emilio. Great talk. Thank you. Yeah, it was great. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you all of you. I have a comment on the salt basin group. Can I do? Of course. Yes, it's a uh, good one. So, um, so it's a really great idea, the formation of this group, uh, mainly for the people that is working in salt basins and have a, a lot of questions when someone, okay, I, I can I can know on this level, okay. Uh, but I, I have a suggestion for the next uh, talks, okay? So, uh, so salt basins, include more than salt tectonics. I love salt tectonics, obviously, but currently, uh, for example, uh, and here that I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm see with a very interesting, the lithium deposits in the Andean uh, or Death Valley in the United States, I think that is very trending topic. So I, I encourage all of you of this group to invite people working in sedimentary, uh, uh, models on this kind of deposits uh, from from the first presentation to the to this presentation i think that uh, more uh, talks on sedimentary evaporates models is 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 are missing mm -hmm. but i enjoy all, with all all presentations okay that's only a, a positive suggestion mm -hmm. thank you all you Thank you, Emilio. Yeah, thank you. It's a good, good suggestion. We want to make it very diverse, so that's good. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Do you know anyone? That. Okay. <laughs> yeah, send us the name. So I, 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 I will continue seeing the these presentations, okay? No, mm -hmm. no problem. No worries. Sounds good. Thank okay, you. Thanks. See you next Bye. week. Okay, well, next I week. go to breakfast, okay? Yep, <laughs> breakfast. <laughs> okay. Bye. Cheers. Bye. Cheers. Buen provecho. Buen provecho. Gracias. Yeah, yeah,